Welcome to segment 2 of lecture 26. Now we're gonna design the third reactor in the ethylene glycol plant. So here it is, ethylene glycol plant. We're gonna design the third reactor which is a CSTR. So let's see. The ethylene oxide that we have produced here the exit stream went through separator to get rid of the unconverted oxygen, the unconverted ethylene, and the nitrogen which is coming from air. And of course, unfortunately, we're going to lose some of the ethylene oxide as well. Okay, so and then we take mainly the, our stream would be the ethylene oxide. I'm going to wash it and hydrolyze it with water. So I'm going to add water to the ethylene oxide and I have an aqueous solution of ethylene oxide I'm going to do this in an absorber and then and then I'm gonna add this stream along with another stream that contains more water but this time with the catalyst H2SO4 right with the catalyst and then the ethylene oxide is going to be hydrolyzed so i'm going to react it this time here i'm only adding water without the catalyst so it's going to form an aqueous solution here i'm going to react it with water as you can see because i have catalyst okay let's do let's go and design the reactor example for two producing 200 million pounds per year ethylene glycol in a CCR. So finally, we are achieving our objective. Close to 12.2 billion metric tons of ethylene glycol were produced in 2000, which rank, ranked it the 26th most produced chemical in USA that year on a total pound basis. In 2014, Sabic and Saudi Arabia was the world's largest producer of ethylene glycol. About one half of the ethylene glycol is used for antifreeze, while the other half is used in the manufacture of polyesters. An example of a polyester would be PET, which is the polyethylene tetraphthalate. Polyethylene tetraphthalate. Okay, in the polyester category, 88% was used for fibers. And you can see that some of the clothes are made of polyesters, right? And 12% of the manufacture of bottles hmm, and film. So look at the clear bottles of water that you buy. And look at the bottom of that. And you can see that the very clear ones are made of PET. And this is the structure of PET, so it's a polymer. Okay, and you can tell where this guy is coming from, right? It's coming from ethylene oxide. The 2004 selling price of ethylene glycol was 0.28 dollar per pound. That is 233 pounds per kg. Okay, but of course, uh, this guy who said. Uh, I should have said it's come from ethylene glycol, which come from ethylene oxide. Okay. Time. Okay. So it is desired to produce 200 million pounds per year of ethylene glycol. The reactor is to be operated isothermally. We have a one pound more per cubic feet aqueous solution. Here it is. We're talking about this is stream okay this is stream which we call it zero one stream zero one okay so we have a one pound mole per cubic feet aqueous solution of ethylene oxide our reactant ethylene oxide our reactant is fit to the reactor together with an equal volumetric solution of water containing 0.9 weight percent of the catalyst H2SO4. 
So here we go. Zero two. This is stream zero two, and we have equal volumetric flow rate. So epsilon zero one equals epsilon zero two. Okay. And but here it's only water and catalyst. So CA zero two, CA zero two is zero because we don't have any ethylene oxide here. Right. The specific reaction rate constant is 0.311. We'll calculate it later. The rate law is minus Ra equals K times Ca. So obviously there is no Cb because the concentration, uh, because B is provided an excess, right? Because you have water coming through this stream, right? And water coming through this stream. Right, so we have a lot of water, so the concentration of water does not really change as the reaction progresses, although that we are consuming water. So what's required? If 81.5% conversion is to be achieved, determine the necessary CSTR volume. So let's calculate the volume of the CSTR required to achieve 81.5% conversion. That should be easy, correct? Okay, so let's extract the useful information from there and let's have it in this plot, which we just did. We can write it as well. So we have minus RA equals K times CA, where KA value is given. The mass flow rate of the product, C, which is ethylene glycol, is given as well. Of course, I don't like to deal with mass in chemical engineering especially when we have reactions so we need to convert it to molar flow rate so we need to get the molar mass of the ethylene glycol right the temperature is constant ca01 or ca01 which is the concentration and this stream concentration of a and this stream is one Pound mole per cubic feet and the volumetric flow rate epsilon zero two. Here the volumetric flow rate of this stream equals the volumetric flow rate of this stream. Right. Let's find the volume. Let's find the volume. Okay, you would say that's easy. We'll need to go through the five step algorithm for CSTR. Design. The first one is to write the mole balance, then write the rate law, then the utilize the stoichiometry, and then combine and then evaluate. Let's do this. Okay. Tamam. Let's do that. Okay. So we need the design equation. We need to write the rate law. We need to utilize the stoichiometry, combine, evaluate the parameters, and evaluate the equations. Okay. So again, these are the parameters uh, we have there. We need to find C A naught, of course. We, not, we need to find C A naught. So how do you calculate C A naught? Any idea how you calculate C A naught? Okay, so obviously we go by the definition. What is C A naught? So C A naught equals F A naught divided by epsilon naught. Correct? Okay, so what is if a naught so the molar flow rate of a here what is it yes it equals the molar flow rate coming from zero one and then molar flow rate coming from zero two and epsilon naught we're gonna assume that it equals epsilon naught one plus epsilon naught two right and here we're assuming that the volumes are additive so i can really add the volume here to the volume here and get the volume here this is an assumption because this is not true always this is not true if you the solution is non-ideal but here the solutions are almost similar and therefore we can add the volumetric flow rates okay so let's continue what is if a zero two do i have a in a stream zero two so when you don't have a in a stream zero two right what about if a zero one how do you calculate it well that is very easy c a zero 
equal FA01, which equals CA01 times epsilon01, correct? And then divided by epsilon01 plus epsilon02, they are equal, so that would be 2 epsilon01, cancel out, so basically it will be CA01 divided by 2, which we have 1 divided by 2 is 0.5 molar is more well pound mole i should say sorry pound mole pound mole per cubic feet okay okay so it is very reasonable that it's half because the volumetric flow rates are half uh, sorry are equal the volumetric flow rate are equal right and therefore the resulting concentration here will be somewhere in the middle between one and zero which is half so this is only correct because the concentration the concentration is actually weighed with respect to volumetric flow rate so you look at the volumetric flow rate here and volumetric flow rate here and therefore the concentration will be somewhere in between these two streams depending on the volumetric flow rates type so now we calculated the ca naught type what else we need to do what else we need to do we need to calculate fc we're gonna of course calculate fc from the molar mass of c and the mass flow rate of c at the exit so this is how you calculate the molar flow rate of C. Why do you need the molar flow rate of C? Yeah, well, because you need the molar flow rate of A at the entrance, right? So then you calculate if A naught. How do you calculate if A naught? Huh, that is easy. You know that, you know that if C you know that FC equals FA naught, right? Theta C plus nu C X, correct? Okay, and what is theta C? For theta C, you look at the feed. Do we have C? Do we have ethylene glycol in the feed? No, you don't. So this guy goes to zero. What about nu C? So let's look at the stoichiometry. In the stoichiometry, of course, I have the stoichiometric equation written per one mole of A, so this is correct. That, therefore, I can proceed with my calculation. And here, new C is 1, so you will end up with F A naught times X. And you can see that you have the value of Fc, you have the value of x, which is 81.5. Therefore, you can calculate Fa naught. Okay, so here is the answer. Here is the answer which you have obtained from your calculation. Again, you need to go through all of these steps, right? So I can help you out with the step if you want. Type. So let's uh, design this reactor together. Let's go through the five step algorithm, which is start with writing the mole balance or the design equation which starts with so step number one v equals f a naught over minus r a times x that's the step number one the design equation then we have the second step is to write the rate load so let's write the rate load minus r a equals k times CA. Then let's go to step number three, which is the stoichiometry. So CA, which is the concentration of A inside the 
reactor, which equals the concentration of A at the exit, which can be written as follows. If A divided by epsilon, and if A can be written as if A naught, 1 minus X divided by epsilon. So, when it comes to epsilon, first we need to ask, do we have a liquid phase reaction or a gas phase reaction? We have a liquid phase reaction. Therefore, it's safe to assume that epsilon equals epsilon naught because we have a liquid phase reaction. So, epsilon naught, and then we have this guy. Here is Ca naught 1 minus x. Okay, is it clear or need to write it better maybe? 1 minus x. Okay, right. so let's continue with step number 4, which is combine. So let's combine all these things together. And we have V, oops, it keeps changing by itself without taking my permission. Uh, oops. And okay, let's continue. So we have V equals F A naught over minus R A minus R A is K times C A. C A is C A naught one minus X. And then we have, of course, an X as well. Type. So let's look. If A naught, we just found it. K, we have it. C A naught just calculated, and we have the all the X's, which are 0.815. Type. So we can easily calculate the V, which is the last step, which is the evaluate so in the last step we evaluate and we get the value of v which is around 213 cubic feet or around 1595 gallons so let's say it's around 1600 gallons so that's the volume of the ccr that is required for these conditions this much flow rate, this much concentration at this temperature, and so on, that will enable us to achieve 81.5% conversion for this reaction. Okay, we stop here, and we'll meet again on the following lecture to solve part B and C. Bye for now.